So uh, first things first, uh, nice little update here to um, Uger Cook's uh, into an assignment checker, a nice tool that we've talked about a couple of times here that will actually help you identify and report on what assignments uh, go where within Intune. Uh, nice update that he added here in this version 1.3 will actually allow you to search for the assignments by the settings name, uh, which I thought was really cool. Uh, now, one thing I didn't notice in his tweet is that right now this is only for the English language as it was quite difficult to implement this in the script uh, and that it is still in preview. Uh, but still a fantastic addition nonetheless. I am a big fan of just being able to search for things uh, where possible, so I, I was excited to see this. Uh, came across another short video um, uh, from our uh, friend Steve Weiner over here at Rubix. Um, he has just been pushing out content like no other recently. It is awesome. So he put together about a... Um, five minute video here just showing the autopilot onboarding experience for new users, uh, which I thought was a, just a great video. Goes through um, basically if you're a new user onboarding into the organization for the first time, walks through what that's like to open your device, sign in uh, to start going through the autopilot process. And once you get to a certain part in that workflow, uh, if you're onboarding for the first time, of course, you'll have to change your password for the first time. You may be required, hopefully will be required to uh, configure MFA and all of that stuff. And Steve does a great job of just showing the short demo of what this looks like for, um, for your users. So thank you, Steve, for putting this together. This is fantastic. Uh, and then I came across a um, announcement that uh, I, and it seems like many others, weren't too excited about. This is a little out of the ordinary of things that we normally talk about. Um, but Microsoft announced that the Office 365 connectors within Microsoft Teams are being deprecated. Uh, the one that seems to affect people the most, myself included, is that means the incoming webhook connector uh, for Teams as well. So if you have the incoming webhook connector uh, configured for a specific channel, what you're able to do is send information to that webhook, which will then, um, in most of my experience, maybe use that for a notification into your Teams channel. Now, it's very easy to configure that today. You hit the configure button, you get a URL, and you can send information to that URL. Uh, Microsoft has provided a workaround or rather a new solution or what their new solution is for this. Um, and that's using the workflows app within Teams. Now, I personally have not tried the new uh, solution just yet. Uh, I will be soon, but I've noticed the uh, results in the comments apparently leave um, a little bit to be desired. Uh, I will say, or uh, Johan, to use your words, room for improvement, uh, as I understand it. Um, so I, I wanted to mention this today because the announcement came out July 3rd, um, but the uh, time, the timing here, as you can see, the first wave, uh, all new connector creation will be blocked uh, starting August 15th, and then starting October 1st, all of these connectors will stop working. Uh, so that's pretty soon. If you have processes that rely on this, um, I, I wanted to point this out. And I see here, Dan has already mentioned in the chat that Webhook is gonna break the MDT finishing imaging script that posts to a Teams channel. And Dan, absolutely, I think that that is uh, going to be uh, something that a lot of, uh, of our audience are probably using today. Uh, certainly those in, in this part of the community uh, as well. A little bit of a short notice, don't you think, in general? It, extremely. I, I mean, from what I've been seeing in the comments here, even on this post, as well as Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, uh, folks aren't uh, super happy about this, I would say. Um, it... Uh, Speaking of uh, social media, I did see today was a very big day for quite a few folks uh, in the community. Uh, we got some MVP renewals today, I saw, which was very exciting. Uh, so I wanted yeah. to make sure that we gave a shout out to everybody that was renewed today. Kudos. 
Oh yeah, big kudos to everyone. Uh, this is thank you, MVPs out there. Thank you for what you're doing for the community. This is good stuff. Oh, absolutely. Uh, our jobs yep. would be a lot more difficult without those folks. Indeed, indeed. Um, so that was all I had for right now, Johan. Well, I, I had a, a few things on my mind, so I'm going to steal that screen back. All right. Uh, Laura. Uh, there we go. So uh, speaking of MVPs, uh, uh, one of our M MVPs at uh, Two Point will be speaking at OSD Day up in July uh, 31st uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, Nehouse is joining as well, together with... I uh, forgot who. Matthew, Masaske, and Gary Block will be joining them. Excellent. What a great group of speakers and a, a great user group, too. That's a fun bunch. Oh, yeah. So, highly recommend to attend this one. The price is just right it's for the community, so it's a free one. So that is always nice. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, uh, community, uh, I have a demo prepared based on a question that did come into our quite recently announced community here. But up on our academy, if you go to the DOA community, this is a new forum that we opened up a little while ago. Uh, but Free to join, free to ask questions, discuss, come with uh, helping others, uh, whatever you prefer. So uh, I'll come back to that in just a little bit because first I wanted to share this little tweet from Mike Terrell. Um, we have been coming back to this uh, UFI security enhancement many, many times throughout office hours, but it appeared that I made some updates now uh, on the official. KB explaining this. Um, apply the update, possibly, yes, enforcing revocations or enforcing the new uh, restrictions or the certificates for UFI. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, not quite ready there yet. So uh, I would recommend um, keep an eye on this one and keeping an eye on the community, what's going on regarding these fixes. Uh, Another topic I stumbled across was uh, Gary having some or was noticing some issues when using the latest ADK and PowerShell. Um, we have still haven't figured it out uh, completely yet, but it seems to be like depending on the OS version that you are servicing, uh, you, you get a different uh, behavior. So I'm quite curious out there what, what you folks have been seeing when using the new ADK uh, to doing offline servicing of a media. For example, you're in the WinP phase, uh, you do something to the image that has just been applied to the hard drive. In this case, it was getting, uh, figure out what packages that was installed and the features that were installed, et cetera, on it. So um, very curious. Uh, worst case, yeah, you have to go back. You could use this MXE for those things, but yeah. Uh, we keep an eye open on that one and we'll report here on office hours as time goes by. Uh, 